Welcome everyone. Our lecture today, Regaining Your Life, which focuses on depression, anxiety, burnout, and sleep disorders, and also conflict, crisis, and other issues that might confront us every day. Since this is only a short uh, lecture, I'd like to make it as practical as possible. Well, most people today would have in their families or amongst their friends a person who have probably suffered or still suffering depression, anxiety, sleep disorders, or even burnout or stress. So today I'd like to give some tips and insights on how to fight these. To me, this is a war, you know, war against uh, diseases, war against uh, losing our purpose, losing our time, losing our inspiration to live and uh, have a great life. So I think uh, the wars in Iraq, the wars in Afghanistan and other places are important to fight, but I think our personal wars are against diseases. is real. Well, we see the news of uh, people being killed in other places. That's real. But I see a lot of clients and patients every day and every week and every month who are really losing their life because they are so depressed that they cannot even think of living every day, but just fighting depression. Either they have uh, a lot of exhaustion, feelings of uh, losing their, their minds and losing their directions in life. So to me, that is a real fight. So a lot of my clients also are not able to sleep, or, or they sleep, but they wake up every now and then. And uh, if you have experienced that, you sleep in an hour and then wake up and then you sleep again and you feel so exhausted as you wake up. There are people also who are hypersomnia. I said if I'm insomnia, we have hypersomnia. People who are excessively sleeping and losing their life every day because they sleep like 15 hours a day because they can hardly wake up or it's hard to keep awake. So that is another problem that I see even in youth, children, they don't want to do anything. They're just sleeping all the time. And a lot of uh, people also are suffering uh, nightmares. Nightmares and also night terrors, what we call uh, parasomnia. So insomnia is one thing. We have hypersomnia. We have also parasomnia or experiences during sleep that brings uh, bad experiences like night terrors or nightmares. And some people who have uh, uh, PTSD or post-traumatic syndrome dis disorder and people who have been addicted to alcohol or drugs or other things, uh, uh, substances, they also have a combination or comorbidity of uh, uh, sleep problems, depression, anxiety, and even uh, rage. So it's not an easy uh, uh, job for a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a medical doctor to be solving multiple uh, dysfunctions. Like somebody who cannot sleep has also anxiety and depression and has a burnout and also is addicted. So it, you have to bring four or five experts to help one person. And unfortunately, the health care and insurance do not always give you a lot of frequencies to visit your healthcare experts. In my experience throughout my international uh, work, I have seen that there are many things that we can assemble, we can combine to be able to generate enough energy and vitality to be able to uh, rehabilitate a person with these multiple conditions. So I would solve first the energy levels and the willpower. Without the willpower of a person, the person might know what to do, but they will not execute the, the right things. So the will to do or the will to be, the will to succeed, will come from enough energy or enough vitality that the person will be able to move to act. So to me, I would start with energy, vitality, stamina, development, and willpower development. Without the will, people, as they say, when men do not have the vision and will, 
men will perish or, or just disappear. Same with people who are sick. They need to have energy. If you give them medication without energy, they will just take medication, but they will go back to sleep. They will not rehabilitate their lives by doing something else more productive. I've been healing a lot of depressed people, and they have the in intention to, to recover. They want to collaborate, but then on the next day, they go back to the same form. Like uh, Sometimes they are depersonalized. They don't want to do anything for themselves. They, they just surrender and quit. For, for There's no more energy left. So my first solution in all of these, whether it is insomnia, whether it's depression, whether it is anxiety or burnout, is give energy to the person or teach them to generate enough energy. That's the first solution. Second, increase the willpower. When there's a will, there's a way. Without willpower, a person cannot focus, they cannot think, they cannot relate properly with other people. So willpower generation is very important. Another thing is exercising so that they have some uh, flushing out of toxins. You see, it's like cleaning a swimming pool with no water. You have to put water to flush the dirt. Now, most people who are devitalized, people who are depleted, they don't have enough energy to flush toxins. Our bodies are not just made up of cells, minerals, liquids, and gases. There is an invisible component of our energy field called the human aura. People with gifts to see this invisible light, they're called psychics. They can see your aura or your light. And this light around you that interpenetrates your cells is the one that generates vitality, stamina, and consciousness. So in our healing expertise through energy medicine, we designed, I designed a system that we can heal the energetic component of the disease, the energy component of the organs, the systems. Your brain is not only a brain. There is an energy of the brain that when depleted, you become forgetful. When the energy of the brain is depleted, you become, a person becomes senile, like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, or they start to have lapse of memory. Now, your brain and your minds are not the same. Your brain is like the hardware, and the mind is the software. It's an energy field where your memory stays. Like when I'm talking to you, you are not listening through the brain. You're listening through the mind. When you're looking at me, your eyes is seeing, are, are seeing me, but your mind is looking to me. When you, when you are uh, attending a lecture like this, your ears are hearing me, but it is your mind that listens to me. So there are different functions. Like if you are a soldier looking through a forest, and you're looking for your adversary, your enemies, you, your eyes might be looking at the trees, but it's your mind that is suspect, sus, sus, suspecting that there's somebody hiding behind those trees. So you can see the trees, but it is your mind that is looking through the circumstances or the possibilities. So there are many diseases, including depression, whether it is uh, depression that includes, uh, I would say, sleep disorders or anxieties, or it's a depression because it's a physical exhaustion. There is an energy of your mind that needs to be rehabilitated. The mind is the consciousness that controls the brain. The brain is like the apparatus, the gray matter, where the mind can work through the physical levels. Sometimes in psychological depression, it is the mind that is the problem, it's not the brain. When a person had bad memories, like... Uh, traumatic conditions. The mind and the emotions have memories of these bad situations and sometimes it becomes a phobia. And this PTSD situation or the post-traumatic uh, stress disorder starting to relapse if your mind cannot forget those bad memories. So what we do in this energy medicine techniques is we will help you flush out those bad memories through breathing. Visualization and breathing with intentions to flush it out. And I will do it with you so you can do 
also uh, heal you can heal yourself on your bad memories your traumas your phobias and things that happen in your childhood that's not that's still affecting you today so we will we will talk about how to flush it out all these things through a certain simple technique that you can do for 10 minutes it's not more than 10 minutes so you have tools in life that you don't have to be dependent always on medical prescriptions even though they might help you there's a time that you don't want to overload yourself with cocktails of medication imagine a person with addiction plus depression plus uh, PTSD plus a person cannot sleep and a person has a burnout and imagine combining that and then a person has high cholesterol or liver liver dysfunction or hepatitis C then you need to take around a dozen of medication and eventually that would overload your liver your stomach you become hyperacidic and your system becomes overloaded with chemicals and the side effects will be your problem It's not sometimes anymore the other things so, so there's a time that you need to moderate your intakes of uh, chemicals so that your body will be able to flush out the toxins fast enough so that your side effects from medication will not be your future problem so I would teach you certain things how to flush out the toxins that you accumulated through your body and your mind and your emotions like bad memories or painful memories I have also found out in my research through my be well science research programs globally that a lot of people who cannot sleep are not just chemically imbalanced they're sometimes warriors people who always worry people who bring their uh, works home or or people who are not easy who do not easily forget bad things so how do you deprogram those bad memories how do you remove them from the past because they're always looking at the past they're always thinking and worrying about what can happen so warriors depressed people people with insomnia people who cannot relax there are not only chemical conditions but mental and emotional conditions that we need to rehabilitate so there is a mind wh which th uh, thinks and are depositories of thoughts there's an energy field in you that collects thoughts have you experienced that when you are calling somebody and they call you simultaneously like a telepathic con connection and you say, oh I was calling you oh yeah yeah I, I'm calling you also I don't know I was just remembering you so there is a telepathic connectivity and interconnectedness between people's minds like the mind to mind connections you sometimes call soulmates or you are very connected or in rapport with people so there is an energy of the mind It's not the brain that is connected like a phone to other brains it's your mind that is telepathically in rapport or connected to other minds and sometimes you can tune into what people are saying and you get mad because you can tune in that a person is telling a lie it is not your brain that palpitates those lies it is your feelings it is your thoughts it is your sensitivity with your energy field so there is a need to heal not only the body but the mind there's a need to heal the emotions there's a need to increase energy and there's a need to awaken your spirit your soul so that the soul can bring you more light to inspire you to move on I have found out that a lot of people who, even healthy individuals executives very important people they have achieved a lot in life they go to the gym they eat well they have a personal trainer they have a good family they have a good career they have three homes and jets and so forth I I deal with a lot of uh, rich people yet they are not happy uh, they're still looking for something else and yet if I see their lives they have already developed many levels of success now there's such thing also as a spiritual depression see when you have achieved many things and you have achieved your passion in life what's next when you lose purpose when you lose your 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 purpose to do something else new you start to feel depressed because you starting to lose passion passion is based on your ambition 
If you lose ambition because there's no more vision to satisfy, there's no more purpose to satisfy, there's such thing as spiritual depression. Sometimes they call this in the spiritual uh, circles the dark night of the soul. And you know, when, when you attain a certain level of development, and there's nothing more to achieve because you did not set another goal or you have achieved everything you wanted there is a feeling of laziness there's a feeling of boredom that sometimes people starting to go back to addictive substances to feel high to feel you know excited and and many other kinds of uh, uh, high feelings using drugs or alcohol and so I've been interviewing a lot of these people who have succeeded a lot and they said to take more things to make them excited again. Because they're looking for some excitement and they're looking for, for many kind of uh, diversity of their experiences. So there is such thing as a dark night of the soul. When you are moving to the next step of your soul's purpose, your spiritual purpose, when you are moving to the next step of your soul's new plan, which you are still discovering, there's such thing as a lull or a void or an apathy or meaningless, meaninglessness and sometimes these people feel they are depressed so they go to a doctor and then they are prescribed with medication as an antidepressant yet they are healthy people they have good bodies they are well built sculpted chiseled bodies going to the gym and others but they they are looking for something that has more meaning and so I have found that even some people who are very achieved and accomplished people, they're going to depression. I call it apathy or a feeling of meaninglessness. So that cannot be healed by chemical means. It has to be through a spiritual measure or a spiritual techniques. So there are many techniques that I have assembled that can heal and help many levels of depression, from general depression to even bipolar conditions uh, there are people that have uh, severe PTSD we need to uh, rewire their consciousness so that they will have to abandon a lot of their old thoughts and there are people also who have uh, a combination of with, with uh, parasomnia addiction a lot of people who are overtaken substances and drugs decided to have paranoia and hallucinations they start to hear voices. They start to uh, look at things that are not physical, like ghosts or spirits or demonic things, things that you can see when you are psychic. It's like at the inner world when you sleep. You can see many things that you don't know in the physical level. So they start to have paranoia, and they start to suspect even their families and loved ones as betraying them. And they start to hurt their families. And, and they are not abusers before, but not, they are not ragers, but they're starting to become different. You don't, as if you don't understand why are they doing that. Because they hear voices that are luring them to do things that are wrong, that are tricking them that, oh, your wife will do this to you at night, so you better kill the person before they kill you, you know, those kinds of voices. Because I interview a lot of my clients who have been addicted severely with uh, recreational drugs. I've taken a lot of weeds and alcohol and decided to hear these voices. And sometimes they can even look at these invisible lights or they cannot sleep because they're always like looking at the light, like a sun. But that is because their energies that are supposed to be shielded to separate the veils between the inner world and the outer world are damaged. Drugs, alcohol, and hallucinogenic substances, they damage the veils between the inner realm and the outer realm. When people take a, a lot of alcohol and drugs, these curtains or veils between our world and the other world gets damaged and torn. They have a lot of cracks and tears. When that happens, they were ab they're able to see the other worlds which are not supposed to be seen when you are awake. You can see them only when you are sleeping or when you go for out-of-body experience, or when a person has uh, taken hallucinogenic substances, they can see like psychedelic drugs, like in the hippie time, in the 1960s. So these are conditions that I confront every week. The combination between uh, 
insomnia or sometimes parasomnia with hallucination, with addiction, with depression. And so you cannot just solve it with one drug. So they give them many, many things. And at the end, they become numb and they become like kind of zombies, you know, like they just do not have more emo emotional connectivity. They become depersonalized and many other conditions. So when I assembled the system called Be Well Science, I had studied all of these conditions from psychological to physiological to physical to even spiritual and psychological psych and psycho-spiritual. There's a combination between psychological and spiritual conditions that cannot be solved by just one solution. So I have assembled techniques to revitalize your energy. Second, to extract these toxins from your bodies, from your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, your spleen, and revitalize your defense system, the immune system, revitalize the blood, revitalize and reconnect the nervous system. And then we work on the invisible energy field called the human aura. This human aura exists in everyone. We can see them. Children who are gifted, they can see the energy field of their parents. Sometimes or they smile like they're talking to somebody else, like angels or invisible helpers. Uh, children can see them. A lot of five-year-olds and below, they, they have not shut off these veils properly because they're still young. As you become more mental and more uh, rational, this veil starting to thicken and shut off. But children, they draw a lot of things you do not see uh, with your eyes because their veils are still open partially. So they become creative until a certain age. They draw anything like energy around your head. They put a halo on your head, something like that. Or if you are a meditator and you meditate and they draw you meditating, they will draw a light around your head like a halo. When I was meditating, when, I was, uh, when my kids are young, they were drawing like a halo on my head and gold energy light and here and here and seeing the light going out. So they were drawing like, like uh, you know, a normal drawing, but they color a lot of things. So a lot of children are gifted. The only thing is they shut off when we start to become more logical, when we start to think only logic and common sense. The energy of uh, creativity and abstractness starting to disappear or started to shut off. So we still see this energy field. We train people to see them. We train people how to measure these lights. And we will see where the imbalances and where the damages are in the human aura. For people who have not heard about the human aura, there are three layers. Your mind is the most expanded layer of the human energy field. The mind is the one that uses the brain. The brain is not the mind. When a person is cremated after death, the brain becomes dust, but the mind stays. You cannot burn with fire the mind. All the memories cannot be burned by fire, but you can burn the brain. You see the difference? That the mind is not the brain. You cannot burn with fire your feelings. You cannot burn feelings. You cannot, you cannot incinerate feelings. The feelings are always there in your memory after death, which comes with you. So when people die uh, very angry and uh, nasty, they carry the same feelings when they die. It's called purgatory or uh, hell in their lives. So these energy fields that I'm talking about are real to us because we see them, we can palpitate them, we can measure them, and we can clean it. So do not be alarmed if I start to mention these things because I will not discuss the medical conditions, even though my handbook, what I've designed, is a seven-day training program that includes depression, anxiety, burnout, sleep, energy management. It's a very detailed handbook. It's a very detailed technique that are taught to our specialists. And uh, this is the system. It's copyrighted. It's uh, under my name. I am the uh, world founder of the system. So today, I'd like to focus more on energy management rather than all the medical discussion. You can go and look f for these things from the uh, internet. 
And, and so I'd like to discuss more the practical application. I'd like to summarize what we will do today in terms of techniques. We will learn how to increase your energy level very fast. Any depressed person, if they do not increase their energy, you medicate them for life. I have solved many, many people's depression by teaching them these techniques. Second, we need to start to flush out many negative thoughts, emotions, traumas, struggle in life, sufferings, which had put us down, that makes us like to carry the heavy load of life. The wear and tear of life is an aggregate of fears, your worries, your resentments, you have frustrations, you have uh, loneliness. There's so many things that can really affect you. We need to discard them today through a technique with breathing and with visualization. Okay? Third, we need to sharpen the mind to focus. If the mind gets stronger and stronger, then the mind can design a system where you can move on. If the mind is defeated, you are only maintaining day-to-day -day life status quo. Your mind has to be sharpened to be able to penetrate what's your next steps. To penetrate where you're blocked. See, it's like this. If you're in an eggshell, sometimes all your thoughts and beliefs and limitations are like an egg shape. It's like an egg, egg shell. It is like incubating you to be inside that limitation. You need to break through that, that shell of limitation. And then you can see that there's another life that you are, that's waiting for you. And you can live a greater life than your, your existing limitations. So what I need sometimes uh, is to coach the people that there is something waiting for you that is behind these barriers, these veils. So we combine life coaching into the healing system. Instead of counseling through psychology, we incorporate life coaching. We talk about the five key areas of life, family life. So we, we, we help them with the family life issues. And then health life. Then we help them with spiritual life to inspire them further to find their spiritual nature. Fourth is social contribution and social life. Some people are aloof and they recluse and they don't want to get engaged with any social activity. So we're starting to get them to get entertained and to follow their passion, their avocation, their pursuit in a different way. And then contribute back to society, contribute back to life, to their families, to their relatives and friends. And fifth is career. Some people are depressed is because they don't love their work. They're working just for the sake of a, a wage or a pay, paycheck. But in their heart, they want to do something else. So we sometimes coach them to select a new career or at least advance their careers to move to the next steps. See, when you are happy doing your things, you can, do not get tired. Even your pay check has a limitations. If you're happy with your work, you keep on doing things. But even your paycheck is higher, if you don't love your work, it's starting to depress you. Imagine going to work every morning and then going at 6 p.m. and you don't love your work. And you have to do it for another 10 years because of your retirement plan. That's a disaster. That's like a, a predicament that you have to deal with. Okay, so the mind has to be stimulated to think differently. A new software or an additional softwares to think. And there is a spiritual stimulation where you bring more inspiration from your soul, from your spiritual nature, where you can find yourself who you are, not just what you are. That's why there's always a question in any spiritual circle that, who am I? But the thing is, who am I? They, they, you cannot just answer who am I by just asking the question, who am I? There are many new knowledge that you need to learn to understand who you are, and not only what you are. And that's always an old age where you ask to realize who you are, you have to search. But search where? If you're so tired, you're overworked, there's not enough cash to buy things you want to buy, books, and you cannot go for a retreat. So that who am I will stay with you without being answered. But there are many, many tools today that can really question who you are in many levels. So you have to read the books that will inspire you to search. Sometimes your problems are triggers for you to ask, what's your next step? 
For example, a lot of my clients were very successful when their loved ones died or mother died. They started to start to pause and say, "Hey, I never thought when my mother will will die." And so they're starting to question that life has mortality, that one day they will also go. So they're starting to ask questions like, "What would what have I done in life if I would go, die and?" They will read my eology about what I did in life. And they will just be reading that, oh, this guy has uh, two cars, two homes, uh, apartments for rents, and nothing for society. This is how I got changed a little bit. Uh, and the Christmas Day, so many years ago, like I think two decades or more, I was walking in Singapore. I went to a celebrate Christmas in Singapore. And suddenly I was walking, in, and then this uh, pole that is supposed to, you know, the parking lot, this is a metal pole, two inches metal, dropped to my head, almost hit my head like, like this. The security guard <coughs> uh, missed the rope. So it fell. I was walking, and it fell on me here. Had I walked one more second, I would have been hit here. And the worst thing is not to die, to be paralyzed for life. So for a moment, I, I stopped there, and I said, wow, this is like second life to me. And then a glimpse of a question comes that, what would they say about you in your funeral? It's like that but inner dialogue to me, like, oh, well, you're an engineer, because I was working as an oil engineer in, in Middle East, and I was successful in business and other things. I was a martial arts champion and many other new good things but then after that there's no other description about me I did not help too many people I did not put a nonprofit work I was just uh, a good successful executive so I thought wow if I was gonna die in another five years if this is my second life I'd rather add more checklists into what I've done to other people and I had such enough cash at that time that I can survive 25 years without working from my work in the oil industry and my business. So I said, I'd like to give some of this money to a lot of charity work. So when I went back, I started to give a lot of cash flow into a lot of nonprofits. And then I joined the nonprofit work. That's where my spiritual path bega began. I started to learn how to heal. I started to learn how to meditate. I started to learn how, how to serve and volunteer to different charitable organizations. And I started to feel better and better and better. And then it became addictive. See, when you do something good, when you share your money, you feel good in your heart. No? Once you start feeling good in your heart, and you do not give in a month, you feel again like, I want to give again, to you feel good. So even saints are addicted to service because they feel always the reward of service. People who are philanthropists, when they give money, it's not the fame anymore that they will receive. It's the feeling good when you give. And it's starting to become addictive in itself. So saints are addictive people in terms of service and, and loving people because they re the return is bigger than if your money is in the bank. The return of investment of the nice feelings comes back to you immediately when you give. So I keep on giving and giving until I almost gave all my assets. But I felt better. But anyway, sometimes your transformation in life happens not in an easy way, sometimes a hard way. Sometimes a person might lose their eyes, their legs, before they change. How many of us today can guarantee that next year you still have two eyes and two legs and two arms and nothing happened to them? Or how, how many can guarantee that you still have a healthy kidney or a healthy liver or your voice is still intact? Nobody can guarantee that. So when you have eyes to see, you have to read books, you have to watch good TV shows. You have to look around and enjoy the world when you still can see. You never know when the eyes disappear. When you still have voice, try to sing, try to say something nice to a lot of people, try to talk and converse, not only text, not only email on Facebook. You try to talk to people. When you still have arms and hands, you shake people's arms, tap them on the back, touch people. When your legs are still fine without knee and hip problems, you walk, go and stroll and, and play with people, kick the ball. 
do whatever you, you need to do. Because sometimes, sometimes your hips get immediately damaged by accidents or your knee needs to be re knee replacement for certain little things. And most people do not understand that there's no permanency in this body. So while we have the, all the chances in life, we need to use our body, our minds, our emotions, our hearts as maximum uh, usefulness as possible because you will never know when you lose them. So, so today I'd like to point out that when you can still exercise, you exercise techniques that can oxygenate your body, that can increase your vitality and flush out toxins. So that is what I will want to teach you right now before I go further. Would you want to do it? Okay. I would like you to stand and relax. Just brace yourself, open your legs like this. Now your arms are ventilators of stress and tension here. Don't you feel a lot of your tension and stress are accumulating in your shoulders and neck and, and here? So how do you release them? Sometimes all you have to do is keep on doing like this, keep on twisting your neck, but it does not go away after a week, right? You keep on doing like this, you keep on doing like that, and you wake up with stiff necks because the stress accumulates and then you sleep with them. So one thing that you can do to flush out anxieties, a feeling of depression or a feeling of something that's bothering you, is you need to flush with deep breath to flush out like this. Okay? Now, I want you to experiment only on one arm. Okay, I want you to feel your left and right arm. Are they equal? Are they the same age? They feel the same age, right? I will, want, I will make your, one of your arms younger, 10 years younger. So what you do is inhale one of your hands, exhale. Okay, compare your left and right arm, which feels lighter and more fluid, flowing. Is there a difference in just 30 seconds? Your arm that has exercised and flushed is now more energy flow. Therefore, it feels younger. As they say, the other hand now, it feels older, right? Heavy. Like when you're stressed, you feel heavy. Same feeling as your arms that has not exercised. Compare them, left and right. Which feels heavier? The, the right arm, right? You did not exercise it. They say that you are as young as the oldest part of your body. So let's do the right hand. Inhale. One more. Compare. Are they even? Now, so you can ventilate a lot of your tension, stress on your shoulder, a lot of your antagonism and anxiety by flushing both. All right, let's do that. Inhale. Deep breath. How do you feel now? Compare your arms and legs, which feels older. Your legs feels older, now it's heavy, because it's not circulating energy. So we need to work on them as well. All right, feel the left and right leg. This time you do the left first and then compare later on. Inhale, kick. Inhale, kick. Come on, breathe. One more. Okay, compare left and right. Walk. Try to walk and see the difference. Is there some difference? The other leg it looks like you're like to drag it, right? Yes. It's like 10 years older than the other leg, which means to say in 30 seconds of just flushing technique, you need to breathe and flush. It will clean out the toxins and block energy, especially if your kidneys start to get affected, your blood pressure and your lower backs, 
are starting to get congested, you need to flush. Your arms are ventilators, so with your legs. Imagine that your spine is like a super highway in your city. The arms and legs are exit points. If the arms and legs are stuck, it's like a tourniquet of energy. Then your whole system, the trunk is jammed. And when you are congested with energy, your, your organs start to get inflamed. People die of acidity, inflammation, and organ failure. The arrest are complications. All right, let's do the right leg. Inhale and exhale. One more. Okay, try to walk. How do you feel? The arms and legs are better than the upper trunk, right? How does your hips and your upper trunk feel now, your spine? They feel like older, meaning to say they are not flushing and they're not flowing. So it's a very important technique to do almost every day, especially if you have families with arthritis, people with kidney problems, back problems, hypertension, cholesterol problems. They need to flush. You need to flush your arms and legs every day to flow. It's like ventilating the exit points of the highways so that the highway will flow. Now, how do you release your stress from the shoulder? Wh where does stress accumulate in your body? Where? Here? Where else? Back? Sometimes your stomach have this feeling of burning sensation here when you're ner nervous. Sometimes you have like palpitation or anxiety here. So these has to be released when you breathe. And biomechanically, you need to position your body to be able to stretch and flush without having to stoop. Because you have to use this as you grow older. When you're 80 years old, you can still do this technique. It's like this. You brace yourself and put your hands in front. And you stretch with deep breath while looking at the ceiling like this. Stretch. Exhale stress. Inhale up. Stretch. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Continue. The idea is to open up here. Do not do this if you have neck injuries. But if you are healthy, it's good to stretch your spine, your abdominal muscles, and open up your thyroid, especially if you want to balance your weight or you lose weight. The thyroid stimulates your metabolism. So when you're blocked, you're not able to speak your feelings, you're starting to gain weight without eating much because the thyroid gets blocked. So when you open... Like this, it's starting to stimulate the thyroid gland and also your ability to express. Your lymphatic system, those that traps your toxins between your cells, also gets unjammed, the lymphatic drain. So you need to do a lot of this to release your stress from the shoulder, from the stomach, from the lower back, and from your body. Okay? Let's do it one more time. Inhale. Exhale stress. If you're angry, exhale it out. Up, down, stretch, down, good. How do you feel? Feeling like you are tingling? Because there's a lot of oxygen, a lot of energy flushing now. Your spine starting to move the energy. The spine is like the trunk if you were a tree. Your feet is the root, are the roots. So if your roots are not well grounded to earth and your trunk, your spine are blocked, it's blocked as if your, the tree is deteriorating. So I would urge you to do many of these sequences every day, which requires a few minutes. Now, next is your hips. Your hips is like the center of power between your upper body and lower body. That's why in any exercise or dance or gymnastic, the hips is the most important to master. Like if I want to move to the side, I cannot move by stepping my leg. It is my hips that drives. See? For me to go down, it's not my legs that go down. It is my hips that move with the body. So if your hips are, is getting tightened, 
you're starting to deteriorate your trunk again. If you look at the energy and the physical biomechanical movements of Parkinson's, sufferers, Alzheimer's, and senile decay, one of the common things among them is the hips are fixed and the spine is stiff. When your hips and spine is stiff, your mind starting to deteriorate and your movements starting to get limited. So as you grow older, I would urge you to really move your hips a lot. The hips is the center of power in martial arts, in dancing, in any movement. It is the hips that drives you to move. It's like the wheel of the car. You have to move the hips to move anything. So I'd like you to move the hips to the right first. To the right and inhale. Like this, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Inhale. Opposite. Okay. As early as childhood, any child or person who started to have mental problems, the hips will not move. Down syndrome, omongoloids, a lot of mentally, even uh, sociopaths, psychopaths, their hips tend to get very fixed. So if the hips are locked, the energy that grows br brings light to the head and brain start to diminish. If you see aging process, one of the symptoms of the aging process is hard to move the hips. It's hard to move, you know, stretching and moving down. All the hips get locked. It is the sign of aging. So if you want to reverse aging and be functional as you grow older, healthy aging or extended youth life, the hips is one of the most important in the biomechanical movement. So make sure that your hips move every day. Especially now, we're always in front of the TV for hours without moving and with a beer in one hand and a coffee in one hand and a bagel in one hand and, you know, <laughs> without moving and putting more calories, the equation is different. It's, it's, it will damage your health. Though. So the hip rolls is one of the most important exercises as you grow older or for children with ADDs, learning disorders, mental fixations, the hips has to move. If the hips move, also your sense of flow moves and sense of well-being and also your sense of humor. If you're divorced and you plan to marry again, make sure that they, uh, your next husband or wife will be able to move their hips. <laughs> if you're looking for a sense of humor, if you see people who are mentally fixated, try them to do their hips like this. They cannot. Or they will do like this. That's why in cultures that are less humorous, like some Europeans, I won't mention their name. Compared to Latinos, Latinos, they dance like this. Some Europeans, they move their hips like this with the shoulder. And see that flexibility of mind and sense of fun is not as much in some parts of Europe compared to Latin America. Also the culture dance, right? So when you dance a lot, there's a sense of flow. When you're always like fixed, your hips, there's no sense of flow. So I urge everyone that the hips probably is one of your driver and your body movements going down, going up. The hips is, if the hips are weak, there's some problems eventually with the flow. Okay, let's do one more time. Ready? Inhale. Exhale. Opposite. In fact, if you feel stuck during the day, you rise up and move your hips 10 times back and forth, 10 times back and forth. After that, you're starting to feel like you are flowing. If you feel that sense of being stuck, just move your hips. It's starting to flow the energy to your brain. A lot of people who are having problems with their health, their hips, I look at the hips first when they move. It's hard for them to, to move it. All right, next. There's another technique that you need to do to deepen your breathing. Most people's problems is breathing. See, you can survive without eating for a day, not drinking water for two days, but if you cannot inhale enough oxygen for one minute, the brain dies and the whole system dies. 
So oxygen is the basic needs and necessity of life. It's not even food or water. Of course, it's not even money, but money is important, but air is very important. That's why they said that if you cannot breathe, nothing else matters, right? Well, if you watch people with asthma or emphysema who cannot breathe out air or breathe in the air, you know, you, they do not think of anything else. So let's improve the breathing technique by deepening your breath through expansion of the lungs capacity. Inhale, deep, exhale. Deep in your breath. One more. Your diaphragm is the organ for breathing. Most often, when you have a lot of control or a lot of uh, suppression, you do not breathe enough because you always hold your emotions by not moving your diaphragm. So if I see people with anxiety, the first thing I will see is their breathing techniques. Usually people with anxiety, they breathe with their chest and shoulder. They do not move this one. That's why they have to flush the air to their lungs upward. Like this. This is called anxiety breath. So if you see your children or anybody in your work or your family breathing upwards, there's a sense of anxiety already. When people are angry, what, how do they breathe? The erratic and short, and you know that the person is angry even they're not talking. They can kill any time, you see? So if you inhale to the, to the abdominal area, that is the real breath, abdominal breathing. As when the baby is sleeping, the abdomen rise and fall, right? And older people, they start to breathe through the chest which is not good because it makes your heart palpitate eventually or an anxiety seeps in. You need to practice breathing to abdominal area. Can you practice that for me? Like to practice first, inhale, exhale. Do not move the chest, the abdomen only. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Only abdomen, not the chest. Inhale. Exhale. In fact, when you, when you ask somebody and they will tell a lie, even children or adults, the first thing you will notice is they will breathe upward and they do not breathe here. And they lock their breath. They say, where did you come last night? Last night? They repeat the question also. <laughs> and they do not move their abdomen. And they start into, that's why when they have a, a lie detector, the brain stops uh, a certain pulse will change when the person holds their breath. You see? That's a sign of lie detection. But some of the spies are trained to breathe while they tell a lie. Well, I'm not saying that you're going to train yourself to tell a lie and breathe <laughs> because the rhythm will stay. <laughs> okay, so, but if you test a child and they will tell a lie, you know that they will, not hold, their, they will hold their breath. They do, and they repeat their question or they delay their answer or they answer too fast. All right, so your abdominal breath has a ganglia of nerves that also circulates information ascending and descending into your body. So when this is locked in emotional upheaval or trauma or paralyzed with trophobias, when you do not breathe, you, you get paralyzed. Like when you get punched here. The same when you have phobias. When you, you think of the phobia, you get locked and it becomes like manic depression or, or a manic pan panic attack. Okay, another thing I want to teach you is how do you massage your organs so that they stay healthy? Of course, you cannot do like this because some organs are inside. But you can use air pressure, compression like this. <laughs> you blow your air while compressing the organs with your abdominal muscles like this. <laughs> like blowing a candlelight. And inhale fast. Again, you need to breathe to the abdomen, okay? Do not. Some of you are reversing. See, if you are not used to expanding your abdominal breathing, you breathe. See, you're not moving this. You're doing reverse. Instead of expanding, you're 
contracting because you're moving the air to your upper lungs. You need to breathe. Okay, hold your abdomen. Okay, expel it first by pressing. Blow. Inhale now naturally. Now, if you feel dizzy, it's because your oxygen is higher than normal. Most people, their oxygen versus carbon dioxide ratio is low. Their oxygen saturation is low. That's why their blood is thick or they easily get sick through the blood disorders. Because if you don't have enough oxygen in your blood, the purification of the carbon dioxide flushing out is not enough. Also, oxygen molecules carry the energy of the air called the air prana or air globules. It binds with the oxygen molecule. So when you inhale, it's not just oxygen that you're inhaling. These invisible lights that are attached to oxygen from the air is the one that revitalizes your energy. If you sneeze, you see lights, right? Like sparkles? Because it opens up your clairvoyance when you sneeze. It's like... So if you look at the blue sky on a, on a sunny day, you see these points of light that are trundling moving? Look tomorrow in a blue sky against a blue sky. You see these points of light that are moving? It's like a floater in your eyes. It's not a floater. Some people who have think that they have floaters in the eyes, it's like looking at those eyes, uh, looking at the points of light. That is called the air vitality globule. That is the one that is inhaled, not only oxygen. That is the one that yogis and meditators inhale a lot to increase their energy field so that they sometimes do not eat. One of my mentors in the Himalayas do not eat. He's a breatharian. And they say that he is more than 400 years old because he is always naked in the snow at 18,000 feet above sea level. He doesn't eat anymore. And he just do a lot of breathing every day and he's fine. No internal nutrition, uh, no, no external nutrition. He's a breatharian. So I had trained with him and I, I did experiment two weeks of not eating also in the highlands of the Himalayas by just doing a lot of these breathing techniques. But of course, if you are in a dirty city like New York or Mexico, uh, what you're inhaling are dusts, particles that have no energy. Therefore, you die <laughs> without uh, you know, food. So you need food to give you the energy. But in a clean environment, the air particles are so pure that they substantiate the lack of food. And these are called the breatharians. Uh, there's a question, yes. Okay, what's the difference between breathing through the nose and instead of mouth? Now, a lot of people have sinus conditions and blocks on one nostril. So when you breathe only through the nose, it's hard to breathe it out fast. So it's easy to breathe out to the nose, out to the mouth without hurting your nose or bleeding. Because if you're blocked here, then it's hard to breathe it out fast. So it's faster to blow it without hurting your nasal cavity. Also, for expansion or expel, uh, uh, expelling uh, toxins is faster than the mouth. <sighs> right. Another question. Yes. Uh, one of the uh, participants said, when I was doing the exercise of footwork, footwork mm -hmm. had a strong feeling of throwing up. Oh, when they were doing like this, they feel like throwing out? Okay, when you're stuck with a lot of emotions, when you start to move energy, there's like a feeling of catharsis. It's, you see, when you start to flush a, you know, an eddy of the river. When you have a, a river that has a lot of eddies, you know, not flowing water. When you start to flush them, it's starting to release a lot of stuff, like atartic uh, conditions. So when you have a lot of blockage in your solar plexus here and here, when the energy starts to move, you feel like you are throwing up, or it's like coming out. Energetically speaking, it's like energetic catharsis. And there's such thing as also vomiting through physical catharsis. So energetically, when you start to move the energy, like flushing, there's some movements that are stuck here that start to flush. And you feel like you are nauseated or feel like vomiting. So it's a good sign that you are expelling something. What else? Okay. All right. So let's practice again the abdominal breathing. Ready? Bend your knees. Breathe out quickly and deflate.
Now, if you're dizzy, just lower your head to irrigate your brain with more oxygen circulation and slowly up. That is good. That is anti-wrinkles. It will save you money from this cosmetic. Because oxygen and blood goes to your face, uh, facial skin and warms them up and promotes circulation in your skin. Oxygen and the blood promotes cleansing, like antioxidants. You drink a lot of antioxidants, and it flushes free radicals and all those uh, side effects of poor circulation. Wrinkles develop when there's not much circulation in those areas. So that's why if you put ice on certain places, the cold temperature allows the blood to rush through, and then it becomes red. That's why if you want to release wrinkle, you put ice on some parts, and sometimes it rushes blood to those areas. It's like a technique. But when you irrigate with high oxygen in your blood, you circulate in your brain. So people with memory loss, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, people with learning disorders, it's good for them to lower their head frequently to bring oxygenated blood into the brain. Okay? So children that are like not doing good in school, they can practice that. All right, let's do one more time. Now, if you want to develop a technique to reduce your weight here, you do this five sets of 10 every day until you burn the calories here. It's not easy to burn calories here if you do not do the sit-ups or if you don't do a lot of the uh, calisthenics involving the abdomen, right? But you can do it standing anywhere. You don't have to go to the gym or to the yoga studio. All you have to do is <laughs> compress the fats and cellulites for them to burn. Ready? <laughs> now, since you have high oxygen, now you feel dizzy. And lightheaded, just lower your head slowly to irrigate your head and your brain and your face. And up slowly. That's why you become red. There's more blood circulation. Okay. All right. One more thing before uh, we go to uh, repeat the whole sequence. How do you release your neck and your spine? Because sometimes you have to do like this. You keep on doing like this. Every day you feel like something is wrong in your back, right? Like something is acting up in your shoulders. So how do you release those pressures so without having to go to a chiropractic adjustment if you don't have the time to go or if you do have limited funds? All you have to do is put your hands on your waist and you inhale and hold your breath and tilt to the right, tilt to the left, center, exhale. Inhale again. Hold your breath. Center, exhale, <sighs> inhale, hold, center, exhale, <sighs> inhale, hold, center, exhale, <sighs> one more time, hold, exhale, <sighs> that will circulate your spine and bring a lot of energy to your head. How do you feel with that? Do you feel like some cracking in your neck? It's a safe way to do it. If you do it without breath control, you can hurt your neck when you don't have air in your cushion. You need to have a cushion so that any release should be flushed with the air pressure or energy pressure. If you do it without the air, it, it, you can hurt yourself. So please follow the instructions of inhaling and holding the breath and then turn right to left, okay? Around five to seven times. Question? After doing these exercises, I feel now that I have a lot of energy in my body. Uh -huh. But my head is feeling very heavy. <laughs> and I feel the same throwing up again. Okay. If you, if you have a lot of congestion and emotional centers, these are emotional centers. And sometimes here. Sometimes it's called tension headaches, right? Or migraine. When you have migraine, the congestion is not just in your head. It comes from your emotional center. And this red energy goes to your head that dilates and other affects your, your brain area. So it's called tension headache. So, so when this cannot be released, which we will go for the next step, how do you decongest your, your mind and your brain to flush out all old thoughts? So we will solve that later on, then you get as a, a feedback again. So when you have a lot of congestion, it's like a blocked dam. When you release the dam, a lot of things will happen. 
all the things that were stuck starting to flow. And that is good because when you are congested and you stay congested, there's an inflammation on those areas. So you release the congestion and inflammation subsides. Or the pain, whatever you are feeling there. Okay, let's repeat the whole process. I'm not teaching you all the things because it takes time to teach everything, right? So that I can teach you the other things that we need to cover today. I will give you again those things that we did earlier. I have a question. This is, this is uh, better in, at night or in the morning? It depends. If you want to be alert at night and do something, <laughs> honeymoon, then <laughs> get your energy back, right? Uh -huh. Especially if you're tired. But it is better to do it in the morning, in the morning after taking a shower before you eat breakfast so that you are able to increase your energy to have all the energy you need for the day. Even a few minutes of this exercise, less than five minutes, will give you double your energy you need and then you will have all the energy for at least the whole day. If you try this tomorrow after you shower and do it for five minutes, your day will be different. It's perked up. It's like there's more agility, there's more zest and vitality and, and vigor. If you don't do it, it's like being sluggish, going to work and not the same. After the shower, so that your accumulated energy should not be flushed with water. See? There's a concept that energy that is not yours yet, integral of your aura, can be flushed by water. So after your bath, since this will not make you perspire, it may just circulate energy. It's better to take a bath before you do exercise. I like the gym, you perspire a lot, then you have to take a shower later. But this one does not make you really perspire. It makes you flow. All right, let's repeat the technique. And so you can remember. Flushing first the arms. Yes? The kids can do this? Yes. If the kids can do this before the school, they were alert. And some kids are not learning well in school in the morning because they're half awake. They're still out of body and they're dragging their bags. These kids wake up at 6 o'clock, 6.30 to catch up the bus at 7 or 6.45. They're half awake. They're supposed to be sleeping. But our school system has instituted all of this because working parents have to drive their kids ahead of time or the bus is earlier to... So when you're half awake and you take in exams or a quiz, you're not paying attention to it totally. You're not fully alert. So a lot of kids fail who are night owls. You know, kids who sleep late and they don't want to wake up early. At 9 a.m. taking the exams or, you know, test papers, they're not really totally there. So give them the exams in the afternoon. They make better grades than in the morning. So for kids to be uh, totally alert and oxygenated, you teach them this technique before they go to class, even for five minutes, you do it with them. And they're like more circulated, not hyper. Because if you have so much energy in here and the adrenals in here, a child is hyperactive. When they're able to circulate the energy, they have less hyperactivity because the energy is distributed in their body, not only on a certain part of the organs and glands. So for ADD, ADHD children, or adults, you do this exercise and you circulate and you have less of this impulsivity and ADD nature, like moving your legs like this all the time. All right. Yes. Um, are there exercises for improving eyesight or for energizing tired eyes? Okay. For eyes, you do, I will teach you the next step and all rotate your eyes like this, back and forth, especially people working in the computer all the time. You need to flush your hands because this EMF has also effects on your energy field. If you're always tired, you feel like arthritic, you feel like numb, you need to flush your hands after using your computer a lot. <sighs> These techniques that we did, and especially sitting all the time, your belly starting to, you know, expand. You need to do a lot of that every few hours of computer work. Let's do the exercise again so that we'll remember. Ready? Flushing the arms. Inhale. <sighs> Deep in your breath. Okay, to be able to flush, you need to deep in your breath so that there's flush, okay? Try to not breathe and do this. Do you see the difference? Do this without breathing. See the difference? I say if it's just mechanical movement, but there's no flushing mechanism. You need to flush. Inhale. <laughs> 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 
good. Now leg flushing. Inhale. Alternate now. Good. If you have a relative with diabetes, type 2, and they're starting to have gangrene or they're starting to have pain on their extremities, you need to teach them how to flush the legs and arms before they get amputated. Because the metabolism is so poor already that they are not irrigated with blood supply. That's why any wound would not heal. If you cannot heal your wound, you need to really flush, especially starting to gain weight and they're starting to have uh, edema and all this retention of liquids. You need to tell them to stand, even holding the wall or holding the chair. If they do that twice or three times a day, they're starting to decongest. Circulation starting to promote oxygen circulation and they have more survival not to have amputations or wounds that do not heal. And the arms especially because they're starting to have pain. Arthritic families, people with arthritis, you need to let them flush. When you flush your arms and legs, the spine starting to flush. Your organs get irrigated, especially with deep breath. All right, next. What else did we do? Hip rolls. This is the sexy exercise. Breathe. Opposite. Now, if you're dizzy, what do you do? Brand slowly, irrigate your brain and face with oxygen and blood, and slowly up. Anti wrinkles. Okay. Next, arm swing, oxygenate, expand your lungs. Inhale. More. Deep breath. Expand your abdomen. If you're dizzy, bring your head down slowly again. Stretch your back. And slowly up. And then your stress on the shoulder, spine, and abdomen. This is called the shoulder, spine, stress, release. This is a technique. Shoulder, spine, stress, release. Ready? Inhale up. Exhale, stress. Chin up, chin in, stretch, open your neck, good, this is a very nice feeling after because the circulation makes you the feeling of well-being, when energy and oxygen is high you feel well-being and wellness. Circulation is not just energy level that you need. The ability to increase your energy and circulate is the secret of wellness and well-being. The river is healthy all the time because it's always flushing the water. If you start to close that energy, the water starts to get stale. Same with your system. If you get stuck on certain parts of the body and there's no circulation, again, congestion happens. The energy becomes old and stale and there is inflammation and even cysts or growth of tumors and all things you don't want in your body. Okay, last is the abdomen, remember? To massage your organs, your liver, your kidneys, your pancreas, your intestines and to build your muscle here to support your lower back as you grow older without doing the sit-ups. Ready? Blow your air. And if you're dizzy, flush down slowly and up. This requires you four minutes, no more than four minutes. If you have four minutes after shower or bath in the morning before you eat, please do this because it will also improve your metabolism. So even you eat more, you do not gain weight because your burning process is faster. Metabolism is the process of burning your food. 
into nutritious energy. When the metabolism is slow, you accumulate more the calorie than what you burn. It becomes weight gain or poor metabolism. And when you're stimulating the neck, the thyroid gland, which is responsible for metabolism, the engine of metabolism, is also cranked. Therefore, if you just do this alone before you eat, you, uh, you crank your metabolic rate before you eat, so you have a higher process of conversion of food into energy, harnessed by the cells. Secondly, your lymphatic system, the lymph nodes, that here, here, and here, are also being drained, the lymphatic drain. Especially if you have a tendency to have cysts in your breast or ovary, you need a lot of that to release the congestion that accumulates into growth. So, you are cleaning and draining the lymphatic system. And the spine started to... Now, last, the turning, right? I forget. Releasing the spine and the neck. Ready? Inhale. Hold your breath. Center, exhale. Hold. Hold. One more. Exhale. If you do that seven times, you have released already the blockages of your spine and neck. How's your neck now? How's your spine? Do you feel like more flow? How's your whole body? Feel like something's vibrating? Meaning to say there's a lot of flushing energy. Meaning to say you are feeling that wellness when your energy circulates. All right, please sit down. Another question from where? Oh, here. Yeah. Yeah, when you have problems, the first thing that will happen to you is you devitalize when you get locked. Like when you have problems, your mind is, and emotion is locked on the problem, right? And they get paralyzed to act. And then you're starting to get turmoil because you are remorse thinking of the problem rather than solving it. Okay, so first, get your energy to flush. Plus the ang anger if you're frustrated. Flush your frustration. Because you can punch somebody if you're very angry. Or you can shout at somebody and it's a wound in your relationship which does not heal in a week. If you have a physical wound, it heals in a week. Emotional wound takes years, sometimes a lifetime to heal. So before you shout at somebody or say something nasty, <laughs> release. A lot of anger accumulates here. <laughs> when you do that, it releases a lot of... Because if you do not breathe when you're angry and frustrated, your mind does not work properly and you're starting to be ne negative and pessimistic when your stomach, your diaphragm does not breathe. When you hold your anger here, you affect even your digestion, your intestines, your heart, your pancreas, and many other things. So you do first the flushing and then you're starting to release all the anger and frustration, especially if nobody is, un if you unload to somebody, you feel better, right? But it's not always polite to talk all your problems to somebody, especially if it is about your marital conditions. You don't want to spread all your orders and then, especially say, don't, this is a secret. And the next hour, the person has told to 10 people. So do not spell out a lot of your bad orders to others because it will become another repair work later on. You have solved it in a day and then the repair work is like takes two years because they gossip about your problem. You can unload it without telling a person. I will, I will give you another technique as one of the closing uh, techniques. How do you expunge and how do you release a lot of emotions? Traumas, anger, loneliness, your stress and fears, anything that you want to throw out. This is the technique. Okay, I will teach you one now. Close your eyes, please. Visualize yourself in front of a beautiful ocean. And this is how you release some of your stress and anger or accumulated pent-up emotions. Just exhale to the ocean all your stress, anxieties, and worries in life, whatever it is, either from your past or younger years. Exhale to the ocean, to this imaginary ocean, your stress, anxieties, and worries in life, your tension, as if the ocean is pulling it out from you.
exhale frustrations in your life, anger, rage, if you have pent up emotions, release them now to the ocean, let go. If you have loneliness, grief, sadness, or feeling of depression, release them out to the ocean, these feelings, as if the ocean is pulling them out from you when you exhale. Exhale all your confusions and doubts in life. All things that makes you weak mentally. Mental limitations, mental blockages. If you have phobias in life, release them as well. Exhale, let go. Exhale all your traumas in life, even unresolved problems, traumas, sufferings, experience of struggle in life, pain on whatever level, emotional, physical, or mental. Release all of these from your life and their memories and side effects. Cast them out. including side effects from childhood of pain in your life, traumas, bad memories. Release them out. Any problems in your life that's still hanging out there, Secrets in your life that are bothering you. Unresolved issues in your life. Release them out. And let go. If there's an attachment, substance abuse, addictions of any kind, compulsion, you just exhale all of this compulsive energy, these feelings of being attached that makes you suffer, makes you addicted to something. Release them out. Discard all of this negativity from your life forever not to come back by willing it to go as if there's a samurai cutting the cord between you and those negativity. Now I want you to awaken your heart to increase happiness and joy and peace in your heart. I want you to remember happy moments of your life, happy events. 
successful time of your life. Cherish them in your heart center. There's a center in your chest that feels love and happiness. Nurture that feeling in the center of your chest by recalling happy moments. Re-experience them back into your heart. A few of them, good ones. I want you to share that nice feelings to people who had helped your life. There are a few people in life who had really helped you, cared for you. You share these nice feelings to them as if this is your last time to express it to them, including love, respect, and gratitude. As if they are in front of you and you're talking to them from their heart. And extend his love and gratitude also to your loved ones, wherever they are, even those who have died. You can express your heart through inner talk, inner conversation. Expressing your love, respect, good wishes for all these people. As if this is your last day to express it. And wish your friends a good life, successful life, your co-workers, your friends, your colleagues, sincerely, as if this is your last time to wish them well. And think of people whom you have hurt in life in some way or the other. I want you to apologize and release your conscience and your guilt or remorse and see yourself being forgiven. Just sincerely and with humility, apologize for your mistakes. And see us as being forgiven and release of your guilt or your bad feelings. Now think of people who had hurt your life or still hurting you. I want you to talk to them, express yourself without blame or anger. Advise them to become better people. Express yourself. And also forgive them, even mechanically, until you feel unconditional. Just mechanically forgive people and release yourself from their negative connections. And let go. Do not suffer by the mistakes of others all the time. Do not be a victim of their mistakes. And let go and forgive them 
and disconnect the negativity. This time you forgive also yourself and accept yourself. Say something nice about your life, three good things about you, to yourself. Appreciating yourself, praising yourself. And I want you to visualize your next steps in the future. I want you to see what you want to become. Positive things you want to achieve. Your goals you want to attain. Results you want to achieve. See all of these positive end games. And visualize them and put energy into it. Your emotions, your mind and your power. And commitment. Now, I want you to feel and sense that you are running to that light, to the future, leaving all your darkness and problems behind. As if you see yourself running to the future and entering this bright light that you have created, that bright light and life you have visualized, leaving all your darkness and problems behind. See yourself running to the future, fast. Power, dynamic, energized. <laughs> So it is. Will it to manifest the things you visualize? That you will achieve it? You have mentalized it? You have emotional, emotionally put your commitment? It will happen. Will it with gusto and with power? So it is. Okay, open your eyes. How do you feel? Better? Lighter. How many feel more peaceful in your heart? How many feel that your heart start to open like more like want to embrace life? Good. There is a corrective and preventive measure that you can manage your life to live your greatest life. One is to maintain yourself to be always aligned, like using this meditation and visualization and exercises. So you don't have to always do rescue mission all the time. When you're aligned, and you're internally positive, you attract positive things. What you have inside is what you attract from outside. See, if you're always happy, aligned, higher energy, you have higher stress and fatigue tolerance. You have higher tolerance against people's insinuations or negativities. You have more patience and tolerance against situations. It's only when you're tired, when your willpower is low, when you have so much stress, that you get irritated with small things and you sweat with small stuff. When you are aligned and powerful and dynamic, things around you does not really bother you too much. So that is a preventive measure. If you are already in a situation where you are in, in a negative position, you immediately blow out and release the energy that makes you irritated. Anger, fear are all energies, including stress. That's why you can feel people who are stressed around you without having to talk to them. People who are telling a lie, who are angry, you can feel them without talking, right? You can sense the stress energy. Stress is contagious. That's why stressed parents are hazard to kids. Or stress educators, stress executives are hazards to their peers. So it's good to maintain positive energy, release stress, anger before it takes over you. Release your fears and phobias before they paralyze your life. Before you cannot sleep, release those worries and preoccupations that is brought to your bed in your mind. 
If people say nasty things to you, do not sleep with them. Release them out to the ocean. It's simple. Visualize the ocean and exhale. If you can do that, you will alleviate a lot of pressure that is pent up. It's called bottled emotions. That one day it will flare up into a rage or hysteria or you can hit somebody or you can shout at somebody and then another problem arise from, arises from that problem. So if you so desire, you can bring home uh, these things to use for your tools in life. Not only to correct things that has already transpired that bothered you. In the future, there are more things that will challenge your life. Life has always discomforts and inconveniences. You need to embrace them by having tools. Instead of being a victim of people's inconveniences or discomforts. Embracing life, you need to embrace discomforts and inconveniences is part of the deal. The package with your loved ones, your relatives, your friends, your work. There's always inconveniences, there's always despair, there's always things that will happen. But if you are prepared before they happen, you are just brushing them out. So just like this. Alright, if you have more questions, you can always visit us. You can send your questions, which has not been answered, because we have many people around the world who are sending questions. We can answer only a few of them. We thank you and blessings to all. Who are uh, attending a lecture like this, your ears are hearing me, but it is your mind that listens to me. So there are different functions. Like if you are a soldier looking through a forest and you're looking for your adversary, your enemies. You, your eyes might be looking at the trees, but it's your mind that is suspect, sus, sus, suspecting that there's somebody hiding behind those trees. So you can see the trees, but it is your mind that is looking through the circumstances or the possibilities. So there are many diseases, including depression, whether it is uh, depression that includes, uh, I would say, sleep disorders or anxieties, or it's a depression because it's a physical exhaustion. There is an energy of your mind that needs to be rehabilitated. The mind is the consciousness that controls the brain. The brain is like the apparatus, the gray matter, where the mind can work through the physical levels. Sometimes in psychological depression, it is the mind that is the problem, it's not the brain. When a person had bad memories, like... Uh, traumatic conditions. The mind and the emotions have memories of these bad situations and sometimes it becomes a phobia. And this PTSD situation or the post-traumatic uh, stress disorder starting to relapse if your mind cannot forget those bad memories. So what we do in this energy medicine techniques is we will help you flush out those bad memories through breathing visualization and breathing with intentions to flush it out and I will do it with you so you can do also uh, heal you can heal yourself on your bad memories your traumas your phobias and things that happen in your childhood that's not that's still affecting you today so we will we will talk about how to flush it out all these things through a certain simple technique that you can do for 10 minutes it's not more than 10 minutes so you have tools in life that you don't have to be dependent always on medical prescriptions. Even though they might help you, there's a time that you don't want to overload yourself with cocktails of medication. Imagine a person with addiction, plus depression, plus uh, PTSD, plus a person cannot sleep, and a person has a burnout. And imagine combining that and then a person... Welcome everyone. Our lecture today, Regaining Your Life which focus on depression, anxiety, burnout, and sleep disorders, and also conflict, crisis, and other issues that might confront us every day. Since this is only a short uh, lecture, I'd like to make it as practical as possible. Well, most people today would have in their families or amongst their friends, a person who have probably suffered or still suffering depression, anxiety, sleep disorders or even burnout or stress. So today I'd like to give some tips and insights on how to fight these. To me this is a war, you know, war against uh, diseases, 
war against uh, losing our purpose, losing our time, losing our inspiration to live and uh, have a great life. So I think uh, the wars in Iraq, the wars in Afghanistan and other places are important to fight, but I think our personal wars are against diseases. It's real. Well, we see the news of uh, people being killed in other places. That's real. But I see a lot of clients and patients every day and every week and every month who are really losing their life because they are so depressed that they cannot even think of living every day but just fighting depression. Either they have uh, a lot of exhaustion, feelings of uh, losing their, their minds and losing their directions in life. So to me, that is a real fight. So a lot of my clients also are not able to sleep, or, or they sleep, but they wake up every now and then. And uh, if you have experienced that, y you sleep in an hour and then wake up, and then you sleep again. And you feel so exhausted as you wake up. There are people also who are hypersomnia. I said, if I'm insomnia, we have hypersomnia. People who are excessively sleeping and losing their life every day because they sleep like 15 hours a day because they can hardly wake up or it's hard to keep awake. So that is another problem that I see even in youth, children. They don't want to do anything. They're just sleeping all the time. And a lot of uh, people also are suffering uh, nightmares. Nightmares and also night terrors what we call uh, and has high cholesterol or liver, liver dysfunction, or hepatitis C. Then you need to take around a dozen of medication and eventually that would overload your liver, your stomach, you become hyperacidic, and your system becomes overloaded with chemicals. And the side effects will be your problem. It's not sometimes anymore the other things. So, so there's a time that you need to moderate your intakes of uh, chemicals so that your body will be able to flush out the toxins fast enough so that your side effects from medication will not be your future problem. So I would teach you certain things how to flush out the toxins that you accumulated through your body and your mind and your emotions like bad memories or painful memories. I have also found out in my research through my Be Well Science research programs globally that a lot of people who cannot sleep are not just chemically imbalanced. They're sometimes warriors, people who always worry, people who bring their uh, works home, or, or people who, are not easy, who do not easily forget bad things. So how do you deprogram those bad memories? How do you remove them from the past? Because they're always looking at the past. They're always thinking and worrying about what can happen. So Warriors, depressed people, people with insomnia, people who cannot relax, there are not only chemical conditions but mental and emotional conditions that we need to rehabilitate. So there is a mind wh which th uh, thinks and are depositories of thoughts. There's an energy field in you that collects thoughts. Have you experienced that when you are calling somebody and they're calling you simultaneously, like a telepathic con connection, and you say, oh, I was calling you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm calling you also. I don't know, I was just remembering you. So there is a telepathic connectivity and interconnectedness between people's minds, like the mind-to-mind -mind connections. You sometimes call soulmates, or you are very connected or in rapport with people. So there is an energy of the mind. It's not the brain that is connected like a phone to other brains. It's your mind that is telepathically en rapport or connected to other minds. And sometimes you can tune into what people are saying and you get mad because you can tune in that per a person is telling a lie. It is not your option to, to recover. They want to collaborate. But then on the next day, they go back to the same form. Like uh, Sometimes they are depersonalized. They don't want to do anything for themselves. They, they just surrender and quit. For, our, for there's no more energy left. So my first solution in all of these, whether it is insomnia, whether it's depression, 
whether it is anxiety or burnout, is give energy to the person or teach them to generate enough energy. That's the first solution. Second, increase the willpower. When there's a will, there's a way. Without willpower, a person cannot focus, they cannot think, they cannot relate properly with other people. So willpower generation is very important. Another thing is exercising so that they have some uh, flushing out of toxins. You see, it's like cleaning a swimming pool with no water. You have to put water to flush the dirt. Now, most people who are devitalized, people who are depleted, they don't have enough energy to flush toxins. Our bodies are not just made up of cells, minerals, liquids, and gases. There is an invisible component of our energy field called the human aura. People with gifts to see this invisible light, they're called psychics. They can see your aura or your light. And this light around you that interpenetrates your cells is the one that generates vitality, stamina, and consciousness. So in our healing expertise through energy medicine, we designed, I designed a system that we can heal the energetic component of the disease, the energy component of the organs, the systems. Your brain is not only a brain. There is an energy of the brain that when depleted, you become forgetful. When the energy of the brain is depleted, you become, a person becomes senile, like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, or they start to have lapse of memory. Now, your brain and your minds are not the same. Your brain is like the hardware, and the mind is the software. It's an energy field where your memory stays. Like when I'm talking to you, you are not listening through the brain. You're listening through the mind. When you're looking at me, your eyes is seeing, are, are seeing me, but your mind is looking to me. When you, when you, parasomnia. So insomnia is one thing. We have hypersomnia. We have also parasomnia or experiences during sleep that brings uh, bad experiences like night terrors or nightmares. And some people who have... Uh, uh, PTSD or post-traumatic syndrome dis disorder and people have been addicted to alcohol or drugs or other things uh, uh, substances they also have a combination or comorbidity of uh, uh, sleep problems depression anxiety and even uh, rage so it's not an easy uh, a job for a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a medical doctor to be solving multiple uh, dysfunctions like somebody who cannot sleep has also anxiety and depression and has a burnout and also is addicted so it, you have to bring four or five experts to help one person and unfortunately the health care and insurance do not always give you a lot of frequencies to visit your healthcare experts. In my experience throughout my international uh, work, I have seen that there are many things that we can assemble, we can combine to be able to generate enough energy and vitality to be able to uh, rehabilitate a person with these multiple conditions. So I would solve first the energy levels and the willpower. Without the willpower of a person, the person might know what to do, but they will not execute the, the right things. So the will to do or the will to be, the will to succeed, will come from enough energy or enough vitality that the person will be able to move to act. So to me, I would start with energy, vitality, stamina, development, and willpower development. Without the will, people, as they say, when men do not have the vision and will, men will perish or, or just disappear. Same with people who are sick. They need to have energy. If you give them medication without energy, they will just take medication, but they will go back to sleep. They will not rehabilitate their lives by doing something else more productive. I've been healing a lot of depressed people, and they have the in intention.